human population is booming so there is more need for transport systems as well as livestock farming more production means more industrial smoke more garbage and accidents might happen add to them dumping sewage in rivers using excess fertilizers herbicides and pesticides not to mention the nuclear activities and the nuclear fall up all of these are human activities natural activities like volcanic eruptions and forest fires so all of them together they cause pollution now it's time to ask you what is pollution it's the presence in or introduction into the environment of a substance which has a harmful or poisonous effects now we know what pollution is so what are the types of pollution water pollution air pollution soil pollution do you think this is all this is not all light pollution yes light pollution you see these lights these lights prevent us from seeing this the stars in the sky and this is another type of pollution also this is not all we still have noise pollution as well all the cars the noises uh, from the traffic from outside this is in the city this is noise pollution as well but in this video we will focus only on the first three the water air and soil pollution so what are the causes of water pollution fertilizers herbicides pesticides fertilizers or excess use of fertilizers may leach into the water nearby water rivers and cause eutrophication herbicides and pesticides also might pollute water acid rain the nitrogen oxides and the sulfur oxides from the car exhaust and from the factories those uh, rise into the atmosphere accumulate in the atmosphere they react with water in the atmosphere and they become acids nitric acid or sul and sulfuric acid and when it rains they will precipitate and will be uh, pollutants for water and they might damage or they will damage and affect the marine or aquatic life another reason here or another cause for water pollution is oil spills usually oil spills from accidents or oil tanker accidents or um, uh, refineries accidents pipeline accidents this highly pollute water as well this is not all factory wastes and harmful chemicals which are dumped into the nearby water they are major pollutants as well nuclear wastes nuclear fallouts are another cause of water pollution on the list we still have sewage sewage is a main water pollutant it contains ammonium domestic household feces this causes eutrophication of water and the garbage is the last on the list especially plastic which kind like kill maybe uh, marine animals and aquatic animals and garbage as you can see in this photo it really covers the surface of water so the list again fertilizers herbicides pesticides acid rain oil spills factory wastes nuclear waste sewage and garbage so now we know the causes of water pollution we talked earlier about eutrophication look at this photo here at the surface of water you see those this green cover this green cover you know what is it this is algae the algae here are growing on the surface mainly covering the surface of the water it seems that this water is providing algae with high nutrients with a large amount of nutrients so next what are the causes of eutrophication what are the causes of eutrophication i mentioned this earlier 
and uh, natural runoff of nutrients from soil and weathering of rocks. It's not necessarily human activities. It can be just the nature. So weathering of the soil leaches some nutrients from the soil into the nearby rivers, and this is a natural event. Excess use of fertilizers leaching into the rivers and lakes. Runoff from farm manure as well, and discharge of raw sewage into the water without treatment, and the discharge of chemicals like detergents as well. All of these causes, or all of these cause eutrophication. Now, let's test your knowledge. Which pollutants of water can lead to eutrophication? If you were following up with me, you would know the answer here. So, which pollutants of water can lead to eutrophication? A, B, C, or D. I have mentioned clearly that fertilizers, they cause eutrophication. And I have mentioned clearly that sewage cause eutrophication as well. So, the answer here will be B. So, what happens when eutrophication occur? What happens when eutrophication occur? The algae grow on the surface, as we said before. As they grow on the surface, they block the sunlight. This means less sunlight is reaching the plants, the water plants. This means less photosynthesis. And less photosynthesis, this means water plants would die. And if they die, will result, this will result in less oxygen produced in the water. And the algae, they have high rate of reproduction and decomposition. So we have increased decomposition by bacteria and the bacteria when they decompose the dead uh, matter in the water, they do aerobic respiration and aerobic respiration as we know requires oxygen which will reduce even more the oxygen in the water and as decomposers use up the oxygen in the water will not have will not be enough oxygen available for other organisms in the water so that's why aquatic organisms die due to the lack of oxygen at which point does raw sewage enter the river this is another question for you at which point does raw sewage enter the river now we know that raw sewage cause eutrophication and eutrophication results in the decrease in dissolved oxygen. So let's see if you know this, the answer of this question. This is the amount of oxygen increasing. Sorry, that's the mineral ions. It's increasing then decreasing. And at the same time here, the dissolved oxygen is decreasing. So what is happening here? At which point A, B, C, or D? The answer would be here A. At this point, the mineral ions are increasing because of the from the sewage, and the dissolved oxygen starts decreasing due to the growth of algae. So, what can we do to reduce the chances of eutrophication? What can we do, farmers? What can they do to reduce the chances of eutrophication? So we need to use less or correct amount of fertilizers. And we need to treat the wastewater before dumping it into the rivers or do not dump it at all. Use slow release fertilizers. So the farmers, if they use slow release fertilizers, the fertilizers take more time to be released in the soil. And most importantly, when we apply these fertilizers, we cannot apply them during rain and we need to limit the watering so the fertilizers stay more time in the soil. And the last here, do not use fertilizers near water. If the farm is near water uh, body, better not to use fertilizers. And only apply when crops will take up fertilizers. There are certain times during the season 
that crops absorb fertilizers, it's better to apply those fertilizers during these times, not at any time, not a random time. What do we call this facility? This is a wastewater treatment plant. It's a wastewater treatment plant. From its name, it treats sewage water. So why wastewater must be treated before reusing it? Why it must be treated? Remember, it's a sewage water. It contains sewage. And it contains harmful pathogens from feces. It contains harmful chemicals from detergents. It's household detergents. It contains drugs and hormones. And the pH of the wastewater is too low. So this wastewater must be treated before reusing it in agriculture or in other uh, aspects or functions. So what are the sources of air pollution? Burning fossil fuels. Burning fossil fuels in cars, in the factories, and reduce or increase the amount of SO2 in the atmosphere, also carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and nitrogen di dioxide in the atmosphere as well. Ammonia from agricultural activities. Exhaust from factories and industries. Hydrocarbon, carbon monoxide, all of these are mixture of gases dumped into the atmosphere from the exhaust of factories and cars. Mining operations also release harmful gases into the atmosphere. Methane from cattle and rice farming. Those animals, they from their process of digestion, they release huge amounts of methane into the atmosphere. And methane is a greenhouse gas, causes global warming. Also, rice farming increases the amount of methane in the atmosphere as well. Volcanic eruption, this is a natural event. It's not a human activity, but again, this is a source of air pollution as well. You imagine how much gases are erupted into the atmosphere from uh, the volcanic eruption. Add to them the forest fires. Too much carbon dioxide is uh, also released into the atmosphere from the process of combustion of wood or forests. Now, what are the effects of air pollution? Effects on human health, respiratory and heart problems. It causes acid rain. Air pollution causes acid rain. As we said, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides as well, they make acids and acid rain. Eutrophication. That's another effect of air pollution. We did talk about eutrophication earlier in this video. And most importantly here, global warming. The carbon dioxide and the methane are greenhouse gases. And these trap the heat around the earth heating up the earth, increasing the average global temperature, which is global warming. And there is also, there are effects on wildlife and the depletion of the ozone layer as well. All of these are effects of air pollution. So what are the solutions for air pollution? Are there solutions? What can we do? The first is, instead of using your car, use public transport this bus like can accommodate maybe 50 40 to 50 passengers instead of using 40 to 50 cars we use just one vehicle conserve energy use less energy try to conserve energy for future and the three r's reuse reduce and recycle we can use clean energy instead of burning fossil fuels windmills solar panels we use catalytic converters as well in industries and factories so reduce the gas emissions into the atmosphere and international treaties that uh, agree on reducing gas emissions in general into the atmosphere all of these reduce air pollution 
what are the causes of soil pollution? So we did talk about air pollution, water pollution, now soil pollution. What are the causes of soil pollution? Solid wastes, garbage, agriculture practices like fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, chemical wastes from nearby industries, radioactive wastes, nuclear fallouts, mining as well, construction activities and construction wastes, natural causes like volcanic eruptions, Acid rain as well decrease the pH of the soil. What are the effects of soil pollution? The past toxins to human health, like soil pollution, soil contain toxins. These toxins are absorbed by plants. We eat plants, so the toxins are passed to humans. It harms microorganisms living in the soil. So they, it might damage them, kill them, and it reduces the crop yield. If the soil is not rich in nutrients, this will reduce the crop yield. And reduction as well in plant fertility, which is related to crop yield as well. Contamination of underground water, because those pollutants, if they leach with water to the underground, they pollute the underground water as well. In addition, to changing the soil pH, decreasing the soil pH, especially if it's caused by acid rain. Look at this photo. Tell me what do you see here? Plastic, plastic, garbage, non-biodegradable plastic, non-biodegradable. This means it does not degrade easily in the nature. What are the effects of non-biodegradable plastics on terrestrial ecosystems? So, how non-biodegradable plastics affect terrestrial ecosystems? You might be asked this question. So, first and obvious, it's visual pollution. It's not nice. And when eaten by animals, it blocks the digestive system of animals. And when it reacts with the other substances in the nature, it releases toxins in the soil and the air. Also, as you can see here, the plastic covers the surface. It's a habitat destruction. Also, the toxins accumulate in animals. If it covers the surface, it blocks sunlight from reaching land plants for photosynthesis, prevents root growth. And as I mentioned earlier, it remains in the ecosystem for a long time. It does not degrade easily in the nature. It kills animals also that are trapped inside the plastic. We're talking here about insects and small animals. Acid rain. I did talk about acid rain earlier. So acid rain is caused by oxides from the car exhaust, uh, oxides of nitrogen, oxides of nitrogen and sulfur also from these factories and the, the industries. All of these accumulate in the atmosphere. They react with water in the atmosphere. They make acids. And uh, with precipitation, it goes back to the surface of the earth. Acidic, low pH, that's why it's called acid rain. So what are the effects of acid rain on the environment? How does the acid rain affect the environment? It kills, damages plants. Acidic soil leaching. Release metals because it's acid, it reacts with metals, like aluminum. Nutrients in soil no longer available to plants. Prevents decomposition because it affects decomposers. Dissolves limestone or sandstone acidification lakes. These are the effects of acid rain on the environment, not to mention that it has many effects on cars and buildings as well. And all of these at the end will affect the aquatic life. Freshwater invertebrates die because of the low acidity of the water. So how to reduce the effect of acid 
rain. What can we do to reduce the effect of acid rain? Technically, we need to reduce the, the pollution in the air and the substances, the release of the substances that cause acid rain uh, in the first place. And these are, here we can add limestone to lakes, rivers, and soils. This will reduce the effect of the acid rain. Use less fossil fuels. When we use less fossil fuels, this means less sulfur uh, oxides and nitrogen oxides are released into the atmosphere. Use low sulfur fuels. And uh, here, pay attention, we are using less fo fossil fuels. We cannot say use no fossil fuels. Fossil fuels. Don't use fossil fuels. No, we we cannot just not use fossil fuels. We need to use fossil fuels, but we use less. Use wet scrubbers as well. Use catalytic converters in industries and cars. Use electric cars instead of cars that use fossil fuels. And again, international treaty for reducing emission of gases. All of these at the end will reduce water pollution and will reduce acid rain and the effects of acid rain as well. That's important to know. So after, after doing or talking about all the aspects of pollution and different types of pollution, I want you now to complete this table. In one side you have pollutant, the source and the effect of the environment. What is the pollutant? that goes acid rain and what is the source of this pollutant what is the source of carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide enhanced greenhouse effect and what is the pollutant that also from cattle and rice and cause enhanced greenhouse effect and what is the effect on the environment from using excess fertilizers i think you know it right eutrophication there so here are the answers and this is pollution for IGCSE. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos. Thank you.